Ooh, a new animation. Now, I didn't like that uh, weird space subway thing. Jeez, they're really putting some effort into these. I wonder who did this for them. Because I know, like, the magazine itself was probably incapable of this. It must have been somebody they were contracting for it. There's no pilot. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. We're in the 2000s now. Wow, oh, ballistic. Okay. I don't remember this game at all. Although it's kind of like um, Zuma. The... It was Zuma was a game that was popular, like a flash game or a shockwave game, where you had a frog that was spitting out colored stones, and the stones would get matched up with other colored stones, and then you'd make them go away, and their the stones were following a track. Oh, it is it is basically Zuma. Oh, jeez, there's no. Uh, there's no analog control with it. I mean, if I could have, uh, if I could just point the stick where I needed to go, that would be so great. But I don't have that. I have to. Um, I have to turn the thing. Sumo was never a particularly hard game. I mean, I get that there's going to be um, harder levels and stuff, but I mean, the very concept of Zuma I always thought was fairly simple. Now, if I had better controls for it, then I would, <laughs> I would have crushed this. As it is, this weird rotate like a fucking Resident Evil character controls that I'm dealing with here make the game just harder. Don't, the trick was to just never think too hard about what you're doing. When you start thinking, that's when you're taking too much time to do anything. It's all about how much time you have. Oh, what is this? Wow. Oh, shit. Okay. I don't know. Am I trying to make all of the balls go away? Because they're going to constantly feed. I don't know if I can actually do that. Blue. I do not remember this game on a demo disc, but as I've mentioned a bunch of times before, this is well past the era where I'm playing every um, every demo multiple times. I mean, I, I no doubt played this, but probably only once. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to lose. I don't know, is it speeding up or am I just getting worse? <laughs> yeah, I'm about to lose. Eh, such as it is, you know. Shit, didn't take that blue away. Yellow away, whatever. Oh, okay, apparently I won. Or I lost, I don't know. <laughs> Game over! Ooh, three fun modes. Weird, I didn't play one. Two-player.
<laughs> it's an IGN quote on here. International Track and Field 2000. What game are we playing here? Should have read those instructions. I have no idea what I'm about to do. <laughs> Hey, I'll be Canadian. My name is AAA. Oh, jeez. Should've went the other way. <laughs> what the hell? The T-1000's in my... is on my team. Is this a button masher? Uh, where do I have a pen? Men's Athletics 100 meters. Pretty good character models, actually. On your mark. I guess I first tap the X button to move. That tends to be how these things work. Yeah, I'm on my mark, Set. dude. Okay. Nope. Okay, I tapped the square button. The tapping the wrong button, so I'm definitely going to lose. Should have read those instructions. <laughs> Should have read those instructions. Oh, the replay. Embarrassing. <laughs> ah, Canada's on the last in the starting line, huh? 17.4 <laughs> each seconds. Qualified. And what do we have next? Hammer throw. Men's athletics hammer throw. I'm a different guy now. First attempt. Yeah. Um, what do I do? Oh, okay, I tapped square again. And I fucked it up. Second attempt. Foul. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Third attempt. And I almost killed someone. <laughs> Alright, let's get out of this. <laughs> the embarrassment must cease at some point. Tomb Raider, the last revelation. Never a big Tomb Raider fan, but I do know how to play these games. I remember when I was a kid. 
and the game that I had, like what I'd wanted for my birthday or whatever the hell it was for a while was Doom. Didn't have a PC though. So the only way I could get Doom was to get the SNES version of Doom, which was a fairly expensive game. But like, okay, so it was the one thing that I wanted. So I was able to get Doom and I'm, uh, I finally, I finally, uh, we didn't have it. Oh shit. Where's our guns? There we go. He's finally able to get it. Shooting skeleton. But before we went home, we went over to a family member's house, and then, like, my cousin had a PlayStation. And I had seen, and he's like, okay, check out my PlayStation. What's he have? He has Tomb Raider. And it just blew the crap out of the cheap-ass version of Doom that I had gotten. Oh, she's about to die. Oh, nope, maybe not. Oh, okay. I don't know you who you are, but I'm going to have to kill you. Oh, I guess not. Look at that. They have like a kind of a real-time lighting effect going on with that guy's torch. You know, it is impressive what they were eventually able to do with... I mean, if you compare this, um, this game to what uh, the original Tomb Raider was. I mean, gameplay-wise, I don't, I don't really know what the difference was, because... I know I must have played this demo, but Tomb Raider 2, I played a little bit of the first Tomb Raider, and then Tomb Raider 2 was the only one I really put any time with. Tomb Raider 3, I think I, I must have skipped completely. And then there was this one. Oh, are you trying to kill me now? <laughs> okay, you're fine. So I don't know what gameplay changes really there were, but it looks quite a bit better. I mean, just the detail on the character model. I mean, her ponytail and all that. Plus, she doesn't have... Let's see, can't really get a view of it, but she doesn't have weird angular boobs <laughs> the way that she did in the original. Okay, so this has got to be the way through. Control's still a pain. I mean, I wish they could have figured out a way of doing a dual analog stick control. It's dark in here. I mean, even that guy lit all those torches, it's still dark in here. Oh my god, the controls do suck. It's basically tank controls, only the camera follows you. So you push left, you push right, you do all that crap. There we go. Oh, is this one of those things where I gotta rush through it? It is. Uh, well, I made it. <laughs> Why aren't you using your legs? <laughs> there you go. The 3D platformers on um, 3D platformers on the PlayStation were quite a bit different than we had seen on the N64, and largely you would consider what N64 did to be the better example of the way to do it. Aside from the analog control from the start, you had the larger environments and shoot a scorpion. <laughs> You had the larger environments from the start. Wow, your aim sucks. <laughs> Good thing you don't have to reload. There you go. <laughs> but this has a quality on its, on its own because, I mean, it isn't a large environment like you see in... In say Mario 64 or Banjo Kazooie or whatever, or Conkers, but the environment is is more packed with detail, and there's more stuff to climb over. This must be the way up. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I can go through one of these doors. Oh, shit. Okay. I can go through this door. Although I have a feeling I wasn't supposed to be able to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm stuck. I just ran into a bug. <laughs> jump through the jump through the door, girl. Come on. Jeez. The tech, it's not just the, the geometry rendering. I mean, the, the texture detail on her is a lot better than in the first one. And the environment, too. That's not like, I mean, I do see a lot of repeating textures. Not that I can get through this door again. <laughs> uh, but it, there's more varied texture detail than just the uh, stone walls and stuff that you saw in the first game. All right, I'm stuck. All right, well, I guess maybe I should bring this one to an end then. <laughs> oh, that was embarrassing. Oh, flare. Oh, yep, real-time lighting. Oh, you know what? Tomb Raider 2 had that too, with the flare. And I could drop it in places. So it was procedural. Not that the real-time lighting we're looking at here is similar to the real-time lighting that we've seen, that we see in modern-day games, or even... Like Silent Hill 2. I, I guess it was relatively similar to Silent Hill 2, or 1 for that matter. It seems to disappear when we jump at it. But it, um. It's still impressive for a PlayStation 1 game. Alright, get out of this. I hope I don't have to restart the recording. Eh, I guess I will. All right, moving on. MTV Sports Snowboarding. There were a lot of these kinds of games at the time, as I've mentioned in every other demo disc over the past year or whatever that released in that year. Because, I mean, every one of them... Hey, THQ. Every one of them seems to have some sort of extreme sports game. Snowboarding, skateboarding, BMX, whatever. MTV, I don't remember them doing a lot of games, though. I do remember there were games that MTV had back when MTV was... No, 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 no training. Actually, do a thing. Oh, okay, I guess I gotta do training. Anna, she's six foot tall, jeez. Six foot tall, but 130 pounds. Jeez. Icelandic women weigh nothing. Ah, oh, you know what? It. I mean, the character model looks like crap. But, I mean, I am looking at a 3D environment. What I keep bringing up every time we play one of these... Oh, the animation was terrible. And the, and the environment keeps warping. Oh, man, the game is mitmapped to hell. <laughs> what I keep bringing up every time there's one of these games to play is I compare this to the Extreme series. Extreme or too extreme is the one that I have more experience with where you have an early PlayStation 1 example of this kind of game where you have a completely 2D set of characters and it's a completely flat plane that you run the game on and you have nothing but sprites as obstacles 2D objects anyway as not really sprites I guess but that's and that's Probably, I mean, it must have seemed impressive at the time, because the SNES couldn't really do crap like that. Mode 7 graphics are, like, all that you could really get out of the SNES. 
and something like the Extreme Games were an improvement over that. But this is such a huge leap over that because it's not a 2D flat plane anymore, it's a 3D environment. 3D uh, polygonal characters, even a crappy one like we're looking at here, is much better than the the on uh, the sprite that doesn't have a lot of animation that you've seen in Two Extreme. This is some trashy MTV game, and it managed to pull off better than what I'm sure must have been a Sony first-party studio. Oh wait, I just hit replay. MTV THQ, Rad THQ MTV again. All right, let's get out of this. But like, this is just some stupid MTV game, and it managed to do something better than a Sony first party would have. I know 989 did Three Extreme. I don't know if that was the same studio that did Two Extreme. I don't, I'm not sure what the lineage of the 989 studios were. Tomba 2, The Evil Swine Returns. I don't know what this is. I remember the Tomba series. I don't remember playing them, but... There were a lot of, um... There were a lot of... What you'd call, uh, weird character games. Tomba that you is living peacefully in the country when Zippo finds and finds and finds a mysterious letter addressed to Tomba. The letter says that Tomba's childhood friend Tabby has disappeared. As he read the letter, all he could think about was where she could be. Was she kidnapped? Is she is she safe? Did uh, okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> That was goofy as shit. I don't need to see it. So this is a 3D platform, or a 2D platformer, but everything's rendered in 3D. It's got a yo-yo. <laughs> Do I jump on one? This game's stalling a lot, it's doing a lot of hitching. This is actually a little... Oh, okay, I can move between planes. This is kind of weird. I mean, this is a 2D platform, but the environment is 3D. But what's really surprising is that the, the character model is in 3D. Now, I usually think about... 2D platformers on a 3D environment is sort of like what Kulanoa did at the time, where you had, uh... Okay, I guess you gotta get up there. Where you had an entirely 2D character on a 3D environment, but this here is a 3D character. And look, there's a lot of texture detail and stuff here, too. I mean, I'm not going to comment on the game actually being any good, because I haven't played enough to really determine that. Plus, I'm having performance problems on the simulator. Oh my god. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's really something here. What I was saying before was that there's a surprising number of PlayStation sort of mascot-ish characters. Not like quite like what you would see on... I mean, people always remember Nintendo's mascot characters, because Nintendo really stuck to their guns when it came to these things. Like, there were Kid Icarus games on the 3DS. There were there was uh, Metroid games. Of course, there's the big one, Mario. Then there's all of these different things that they've gone and 
<laughs> and even if they have a bad release, Nintendo tends to stick to their guns and they tend to release another whatever they have. As a result, Nintendo has this big catalog of characters that they can pull from when it comes time for something like a Smash Brothers game. I'm, but I mean, look at this. Use, oh, okay. Run this stupid machine. It keeps surprising me how many kind of character platformers or character action games or whatever. Sony first party game studios, or even second party, I guess, if you want to go from there, have yeah, produced. Like, here's one that I completely forgot even existed, but there's also, like, whatever the, uh, what's his name in medieval, um, like, Daniel Fortescue is, as weird of a name as that is, that's a, that's a Sony character that could have been, um, leveraged a little bit better. But they released a couple of those, and then Sony moved on, and then didn't really rehash that too much. I think it was a medieval remaster or something recently, but... But, I mean, you get what I mean. I'm... Oh, okay. House on the point. <laughs> but there's a lot of these kinds of things. That Sony just... It's not memorable like the Nintendo characters, really just because... They didn't really rehash these things. I'm sure if there was a Tomba game for the PS2, and then a Tomba game for the PS3, and then a Tomba game for the PS4, people would remember it too. Even if there were lots of, um... Even if some of them were bad. <laughs> This, I'm not feeling, though. This is Tomba 2, so this must have been a one before it. Oh, a boomerang. Uh. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> Bash those fish! All right, I think I've gotten the point here. <laughs> Whatever I gotta do to get past this, I don't really wanna do it. This isn't really my kind of thing anyway. So I can't, I'm not maybe the best judge in determining whether this is a good game or not. We're plus, plus kind of removed from the Torture a friggin' seagull. Maybe not the best person to judge whether a character platformer like this is a good game or not, but anyway, moving on. Supercross Circuit, another one of these. The kind of... I, there was a motocross game in the last disc, wasn't there? Idle Minds. I remember that name. They must have done a couple of things that I, of note. Okay, now, I, I own a dirt bike. I ride a dirt bike. I think it's fun. I don't really want to watch guys do it on a track in a football stadium. Although, once again, this is another example of this kind of game wasn't really possible before. So, I mean, I can look at this. Going through these, the multiple years worth of demo discs, from the first one I had up until this, do you see a pretty significant change in the sort of quality of the game, as I've, as I've mentioned a million times? This was released in 2000, so I guess this was a February 2000 disc. So that's fairly late generation. Well, actually, it is quite late generation PlayStation One game. So you really see like the big that you basically reach the point where 
call it peak PlayStation 1. I'm losing. <laughs> the Mountain Dew case is all over the place. Peak PlayStation 1, because it was five years or so after the PlayStation 1 released, so developers have their experience with 3D hardware, they have their experience on the PlayStation specifically. The knowledge base out there is pretty significant to be able to churn out more technical stuff. And the PlayStation 2 hasn't released yet, so the majority of the effort hasn't really moved on to the PlayStation 2 yet. Because I can imagine, like, the PS2's out and somebody still has a PS1 game or a PlayStation 1 game they're about to start development on. But, like, a studio or a, a publisher isn't going to want to dump a lot of money into releasing a game for an old platform. I mean, the PS1 sold a lot of machines, but it wasn't the big new hotness. That was when it was probably, like, the peak PlayStation 1 year. And it does show. I mean, playing this game at a resolution higher than PlayStation 1 hardware is actually capable of. Uh, I'm not sure what resolution I'm going to upload this to you at, but probably 720p, which is quite a bit higher than native resolution, which for the most part in most games I think was 320 by 240. There were different uh, modes, but I think most games were 320 by 240. Wow, this is really hitching. I run into a lot of problems like this while trying to play uh, demo discs on an emulated PlayStation because the... Anybody who's done a lot of emulator stuff knows you have to tweak little things in the game, in the emulator settings, in order to make any particular game run properly. But with a demo disc, there's like six games, six different games. Each one's got a different game engine, each one's got different needs and all of that, so. Plus, I don't play these discs, load this up and start doing my thing. So honestly, this game is actually, this disc, uh, emulator is configured to run uh, Resident Evil 2. So this is a Resident Evil 2 profile, essentially, that I'm trying to run some motocross game on. And like five other, six other games. So that's why the emulator isn't quite getting the job done. Plus I want to have like a, I, I could go through here and put a lot of effort into making sure like I have different emulator settings for each one, but I, then that would defeat the purpose of having this, uh, having this sort of be a, not a virgin experience, because I definitely played these games before, but the nostalgic feel of like just sort of jumping back into something. This is the first time I've seen it in 20 years or whatever. And if I play it ahead of time to get my emulator settings right, that is destroyed. Like I probably just would have skipped over Toma if I <laughs> if I had gone and played it before. Or that MTV snowboarding game. I wouldn't have skipped anything. But uh, that 989, huh? 989 did everything. Geez, that was a prolific studio at the time. I wonder how many wonder how many development teams 989 actually had. Must have been a lot, because they did this, they did all of the damn sports games, all the other sports games. They did uh they were doing Twisted Metal, I think they did Jet Moto after Single Track gave it up. It was a lot. Sneeze coming. <laughs> I could edit that out, but I'm not going to bother. Medal of Honor, really? I had a demo of Medal of Honor? Ah, oh, shit, it's a video. <laughs> Ihre Papiere, bitte. Your, your papers, 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 please. Oh, this is hitching. But they have their granate forgotten. Excuse me, but you forgot your grenade. <laughs> the American has hundekuchen in the tasche. The American has dog biscuits in his pocket. And um your life, he has a Panzerfaust. Run for your lives. He has a bazooka.
Electronic Arts and DreamWorks Interworks Interactive present Medal of Honor. Medal of Honor. Essentially the for your finest hour. best example of what a first-person shooter game ended up being on the PlayStation 1. Medal of Honor 2 was a little bit better, but Medal of Honor was really like the standard torchbearer for that console. I'm going to stop here and talk about Medal of Honor for a little bit. I should, I should play that game for like a quick play or something in the future, since there's clearly no demo of it here. But... I mean, you had um, first-person shooters, of course, on the PlayStation 1 before Medal of Honor. There were the Doom ports. And actually, like, Doom on the PlayStation 1 was actually a pretty good game. But there were other things like P.O.'d and, and whatever. But people tend not to think of the PlayStation 1 as being a first-person shooter machine. And the thing everybody keeps jumping over to was GoldenEye, the... Uh, James Bond game on the N64, which I guess really released a year or two before Medal of Honor did. I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. And by look that up, I mean I'll forget to and not bother. But GoldenEye was the standard of first-person shooters for this generation. And it really, it feels like the first-person shooter genre plays to the hardware strengths of the N64. But then... Electronic Arts comes out with Medal of Honor and shows, you know what, there's a different way of doing this. And of course, like I mentioned before with the PlayStation 1, the hardware um, performance characteristics of the machine sort of lent itself more appropriately to more cramped environments with, with um, detail packed in. And Medal of Honor was designed around that idea. So... It ended up being a pretty big deal. Now, the Medal of Honor, I think, doesn't quite get the same love that GoldenEye did. Even though I don't think it was a worse game in any way, it didn't have the multiplayer to my memory. I don't think it had any multiplayer, which was, I guess, was the big draw of, of um, 007. But as far as the campaign goes, neither game, I would imagine, has aged well. Medal of Honor, I gotta play again to see what it's like, but... But GoldenEye definitely does not play well. By a modern context, of course. But it was, I don't know, it took itself more seriously than GoldenEye did. Because it's a world, I mean, aside from this video here was rather comedic. The game itself took itself pretty seriously. And it pushed the, uh, the PlayStation 1 hardware. I mean, pretty hard. I mean, Medal of Honor 2 was... A little more, but Medal of Honor is still a big deal. Hot Shots Golf 2. Hot Shots. Oh, man. Is that a series that's still going on? Again, another genre of games that I've never really been big on are these golf simulations. I'm not a golfer. I don't watch golf. I don't play golf. I've mini-golfed a few times in my life can't call myself a fan <laughs> but Hot Shots was the one time I played it <laughs> was uh, entertaining I guess but it's still not my thing so I'm not the best judge on whether it's any good it did kind of like it's weird little sense of humor with it's characters <laughs> look at that the ball changed direction went back over I know Hot Shots continued on. I mean, there was Hot Shots on the PS2 and and all of that. I'd actually forgotten that the Hot Shots series started on the PS1. I tended to think of it as a PS2 game. I mean, this is just a video, but the uh, the video, the graphics look pretty good in the video. So it was a Sony first party game again. Okay, we're back to this. For some reason, I was thinking that there was a um, there was an Ace Combat game on this disc. Clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about, but for some reason, I'm remembering seeing, thinking that there was an Ace Combat game on here. Maybe it's because that intro with the fighters shooting at that blimp. Anyway. That was um, 
official U.S. PlayStation Magazine demo disc number 29. Hmm. What am I going to do for my uh, intro video? Oh, I mean, you must know by now because you've seen it at the beginning of the video. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> 